You figured out when you're going back on the air? Hmm? On the Zoom thing? Oh, the, the broadcast stuff? Yeah. Well, I did get a quote from uh, Spectrum there. It was like 10000 10, or whatever they did that oh. one. So yeah. we're procrastinating a little on that just because it's so expensive. Well, they, I thought we put money away for that. We were collecting money for something. Um, they had to give us fees or something. And the cable franchise money? Yeah. Right now. Yeah, the Spenick wants to put it in the other building. No, this was, this was when we still had the other building. We had it in there. Yeah, every year we get the cable franchise fees is what you're talking about. Yeah. So we, we've made a motion or something, or you guys have, to put it in the, in the fund. It's there. Right. That's <laughs> It's hard to find them at ten I keep saying I'm, I'm going too fast and all. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, I'll let you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Keep an eye on your list. It's easy to do, though, because you just, when you had all those potholes, you, you, you were, you know, dodging them. <laughs> Business items 5.1 Transfer Station Waste Hauling Services Bids. Um, yep, so the, we put out the bid for the waste hauling after having a conversation with uh, Ed Knightley over at the transfer station. We received two bids, 207 waste, 50 yard, hauling the 50 yard can for 245, hauling the 100 yard can for 330, and that's per haul. Uh, Reynolds and Son, 50 yard can for 395 a trip, and they did not put a bid in for the 100 yard. And the way the bid was crafted, um, they, they could shoot, you know, they could do it either or both. So, um, we just received those, we opened those bids just the other day, so I put them in the packets for the board to be able to review and look at. Um, the transfer station manager is on vacation uh, this week, which was a pre-planned vacation, so I was hoping that we could, uh, after the board's had time to look at them, we can bring these up for possible decision at the next meeting, please. Who's holding it right now? Um, all my voice, all my voice, they didn't want to put it in. They didn't. You know if we contacted them directly? We did. Any more action tonight, or as the town manager recommended for our next meeting? Next meeting's going to be? I mean, it really looks like it. Cool, seven, one, right? 
Well, we have a lot bigger. <coughs> um, the other bit is a lot higher than what we're paying now. I have, um, 207 did provide the references. We asked for three references. They did provide those. I have not had a chance to follow up with those references. So, uh, one of them was, it, uh, they do their standby for the town of Poland is one of the ones, so I'm just gonna call them because they're right next door. They do for Poland. They say they're a backup hauler for Poland. You, you want a motion? If you prefer Ed getting agreeing with you, or how would you? Oh, I was just, I just didn't know if we wanted to give Ed an opportunity to speak to it where it's, he's going to be the one interacting with these folks. Um, and if you wanted me to follow up with the, uh, with the uh, references they listed, uh, Walmart distribution mm -hmm. is one of them as well. And so. I make a motion to go to 207 unless you find out something bad in there. Follow up. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Scott. Yeah. Thank you. Five point two. Police Department capital request. Chief's here. Yep. So uh, the police chief is here to talk about his capital requests. Just as a refresh. These are the capital items that were discussed um, a few months back, requesting that these funds come from the fund balance uh, policy account. They're uh, listed right here in your packets. So some cameras, a vehicle camera, body cameras, uh, portable radios, ballistic vest. The chief right before the meeting did provide me with an updated quote for the, um, for the uh, camera systems. So I prov I've got a copy of those for you guys right here. Or there and here it is. Different from the packet. Yeah. Uh, the price is just a little bit less. So, Chief, do you want to uh, maybe go over with the board your your thoughts? Start yeah. with the cameras. Sure. Well, originally I I was seeking uh, two cruiser cameras. Um, I dropped that to one because of the initial cost that I had noticed. They they issued. Uh, and that's from the $48,112. And that was with a four year subscription. Uh, with one cruiser camera and eight body cams, I finally got it down to $37,700. Yes. So, why is it, uh, just so everybody's on the same page, why do you? Uh, we're trying to replace some inoperable stuff and update well, stuff. Well, the, the three body cameras that we currently have, we damaged one a, a little while back in the contacted watch guard who, who has since been sold to Motorola. So they're doing that changeover, and that's why there was a difference in estimates that I had gotten. So the three body cameras that we have, they no longer support. We can't even get parts for these things. So we're on a time limit with those anyway. And as far as the Inca camera, um, I have one cruiser that doesn't have a camera in it. Um, and the other ones that we have, we're starting to have hard drive issues trying to get things to download because they're, they're so old. And uh, we've had to swipe the hard drives to try to get them to last longer. I mean, that's a regular maintenance thing that camera though, right? It is, it I is. Mean, and we've had the, these particular ones, we've had a minimum 10 years now. Good. So you've got pretty good life on them. We have. And I, I did uh, explore other options, but even, it, it, say we went with Axon, by the time we did the, the entire exchange, we're going to spend this, if not, probably even more. By the time I get the new hard drive, new computer set up, um, for all the downloads and everything, yeah. it, it, we're already vested into WatchGuard, which again is now Motorola. But I mean, I used to have to get them from the truck, and you got three years out of them. Yeah. Yeah, we've done well. I mean, some of them have been smashed I'm on sure the ground. I'm sure you more complicated than ones I had, but. Yeah. I think it's one of the major ones, man. So this money's already budgeted. This would come from the uh, the fund balance policy account, the 9701 account. So that money exists there. That's what you're asking. Where do we take it from? 
his total fund balance. Oh, I know that. Oh, okay. But okay. I'm just that we knew we didn't have to have these. We didn't we budget for them. Because early on in the budget process, we set aside some capital purchases that we knew we planned on coming from the fund balance rather than raising the money on the floor of town meeting. So we just. And then Pavey came in higher than. About 400,000 higher, yep. So. I'd make a motion. I'll second it. I think it's future liability insurance first. I'll put a little again. Motion to authorize the purchase. Yep. Yeah, that was in the second. You said discussion. All those in favor? Want to discuss the radios, Chief? Yes. Um, we're seeking three base plates. These units right here. Um, I've, I've done some bargaining back and forth, and the cost has gone up since we originally purchased these. Um, but right now, there's a sale price of 26, 24, 35 a piece, um, which brings it down to 10, 7, 47, 56 for three. Um, the reason I'm asking for portables is because when we do either like the search warrants, or if we have major events like the fair or the 250. And we have a lot of reserves working also. Some of those guys don't have any radios at all. Just to back them up a little bit, the original radios we got, the fire department got a grant through Stephen King and then through Bob Bear Foundation. So we've never had to buy these before. So this is the first time having to buy these. And they're well worth the, we did a radio study with uh, Derek O'Wireless, ran around town to make sure we got the best bang for the buck for the expansion of the What are the, is this through a specific vendor? Uh, yes, through Motorola. Direct Motorola. Mm -hmm. What's the town mm -hmm. manager's thoughts? On the radios? <coughs> <coughs> well, I think that, you know, I think radios are necessary. I think that we need to uh, make sure that we have good communications. Uh, the chief and I did talk about the expense and whether or not maybe we could get by with um, purchasing, you know, just one or two versus three. Um, you know, we had that conversation. Um, and I have those figures too if we decide to do two or one. Okay. Um, I did, you know, I did include in the capital uh, list that we presented a while back, I did include the radios on there as one of the things that uh, we were looking at. So I think this is a necessary piece of equipment. I don't think we can go wrong if we, uh, if we purchase them. So, but at the same and time. Is there, what's the shelf life on, all, on the new one? Uh, Probably the same as the old ones, right? Yeah, I mean, we do have some old ones. Uh, I mean, the antennas have fallen apart. And, uh, they don't work as well as these because these are seven watts versus some of the old ones that are a lot less and dispatch can't hear us at all of those they're nothing but a weapon where we're basically wearing the price that's in here is what you said right yeah I, ten, um, for three it's ten thousand seven hundred forty seven dollars yeah. and fifty six cents for two seventy one sixty five oh four and obviously for one um with everything there it's thirty five eighty two fifty two but what is the life expectancy? I I would dare say we can get ten years if I if I go by the past experience I've had with radios. Right. Probably ten years anyway. I just didn't want to get three years. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Paul. I'll make a motion to purchase the three. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Vote. Oh. And then lastly, uh, you want to speak about a ballistic vest. Yes, the, the newest officer we've hired, um, he's currently wearing a vest. It doesn't fit him properly, but it's something that we threw together because um, they need to wear something when they're working. And, but it's not safe to the point where if he was, something should actually happen where it doesn't fit him properly, I kind of feel like he may suffer injury from that. 
just because it doesn't fit anywhere properly. Plus comfort and everything else that goes along with something that doesn't fit you properly. You can have a police officer to cut out that. <laughs> Make a motion to accept. Second. Motion is second. Um, this, is this the officer that came from another agency? Yes. So when we, when we, just curious, when we get an officer from another agency, we have the buyout, we have to pay that agency. Do we inquire about buying any of their equipment that they may have already had, if they had? Uh, Sometimes, yes. Okay. Yep. I think it's something we should probably always try to ask. Um, yeah. Especially that kind of equipment, if they, the prior agency's already bought one, you know, it's got a brand new desk, they may sit on it and it not fit. And I, and I think what in the past, Dana, you know, with other agencies that people have come from, that has happened. We yeah. purchased the best. Yeah. So I, I absolutely, I agree. Any other discussion? All those in favor? No. Can I ask how much the was? I'm sorry? How much was the bid? For the vest? Yeah. Uh, 1,623 bucks. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Five point three fire department capital request. All right. So this is the uh, same approach as the police department. These are some items that were on the uh, capital request uh, that was presented to the board a little while back. Um, so I've itemized these on here as well uh, with the prices and so forth. So the one of the things that uh, the chief and I have talked about is uh, the turnout gear, the turnout gear boots. Turnout gear boots is new, that was something that was recently added. Um, but the air bottles and the EMS pumps, we talked about those uh, being the priorities. We did talk about the hydraulic uh, tools, the, the jaws of life, if you will. The current ones are still operable, as I noted in here. Um, however, the chief is trying to replace these prior to them uh, uh, breaking. And then also you have the public safety buildings, the phone system. This is another one of those things that is still uh, not optimal, but still uh, operable at the time. I guess there are some issues and issues with uh, replacement parts. Um, and then lastly is the public safety building, the windows, uh, replacement of the windows. Those are out to RFP currently, so I don't think a decision needs to be made tonight regarding the windows, but I put them on here just uh, so the board you know, has that on their mind as we're considering these other items. So, Chief, did you want to talk about the turnout gear and the boots first? Uh, the turnout gear, we follow uh, an NFPA standard. Uh, the gear's only good for 10 years, and uh, then you can't use it for interior firefighting. We do keep it for pump operators or from junior firefighters and outside firefighting stuff. Uh, so we're trying to get on a plan every, every year to set aside money for four sets. This year, I found a company through Poland Fire Department who uses a different vendor. And we reached out to him and with our current specs, he gave me a price quote to 2,900 for a pant, uh, pant and coat, I believe was the price, uh, which is a lot less than what we normally spend. So I think we're doing the due diligence and like to switch companies per se and order four sets of gear. I mean, you must have to meet some sort of standards. Uh, oh yeah, they all meet this some standard, but our spec goes a little above and beyond to make our firefighters safer. Um, I want everybody to go home. But these uh, these these don't meet your spec? Oh yeah, it does. Oh, yes. okay. yes. It all meets the uh, NFPA 1851 standard on selecting and maintaining firefighters. Gear. All of, you can't sell it without meeting that standard. Do you know if this stuff, this different vendor has the same life expectancy? Life expect yeah, they all follow the 10 year rule. Make a motion on the turnout here. Susan, the first one or including the boots? No, I, was, I, well, I thought you were going to take them one at a time. I, I, I haven't heard the discussion yeah, I, on the I, second one. I need to include the boots because that's part of the gear. It's a, we get those through the fire store. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they're, they're $600. I don't get it. I, I'll make them, but it's, it's crazy amount of what stuff costs nowadays. Can I write a boot to it? Could you also um, talk about the air bottles and the pumps because they're all in that category of the thirty-one thousand? Oh, okay. Did you realize they were? 
Uh, the air bottles are the uh, bottles we wear on our SAB packs on the back of our structural gear. Uh, gives us the air to go inside our burning buildings. They have a shelf life of 15 years. Every year we replace five at a, at a time, so we never are without bottles that we have to throw away. So we always have plenty of spare bottles. Um, EMS pumps or main EMS, every new protocol, if there's new medicines that come out, we have to program our pumps to be able to give the correct medicine and dosage to the patient. Our current pumps will not accept the new medications. They're not serviceable. We can't even program them anymore. So we have to have pumps that can give medicine to patients for mainly met rules. Okay. I'll add them all in my motion. Second. <laughs> can you clarify the motion which the turnout gear, the turnout gear, the turnout turn boots, the air bottles, and the EMS pump? Motion and second, Colby. Yep. Discussion? All those in favor? Go. We want to talk about the hydraulic tools? I'd like to hear the story. I'm going to have to ask uh, Hunter, uh, 28 years old ish, when Bob Bear bought those? Uh, yeah, the old set is actually. Actually, older than that. I'm going to say it. Okay. Okay. So we got two sets now. We have a <coughs> old set that we keep in as a, as a as a backup. Don't want to get parts for, but yeah. until it dies, we keep it as a spare in case yeah. we need it. Um, the newer set is yeah, this set. No, we were in, we were in the, the old station. So, so I was thinking 25 years old, years, somewhere so. on there. Um, how, how, often, how often do you use them? Uh, well. It could be using tonight. I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm just guessing. I mean, probably maybe five times a year, mm -hmm. mutually to Poland, mm -hmm. Paris, Norway, mm -hmm. Harrison. Uh, they call us pretty quick if they're doing an extrication. So they want a second set in case theirs fails while they're cutting that type of thing. Um, and do you do the same with them? Oh, yeah. But staffing shortages, Paris may not show up, or Poland may be on a call so well. Uh, so with those being older, and they're actually hydraulic tools, so you're limited on a 75 to 100 foot hose. So you're carrying a power unit, two tools, two hoses, getting it set up. Now you're limited on what you can do and how far of an area you can cover. With a replacement set of battery tools, you're unlimited where you can take them. And you, the, your limitation is your battery life of the tool. Uh, there's newer metals coming out, newer vehicles. We don't know if that will cut a door jam or whatever with our current set. But I'm being told that the newer battery operators can. So, so you, you don't have a battery with the old one? No, it's all hydraulic. How does a hydraulic motor run? It's on a pump. It's a gas-powered pump. Gas pump. Okay. It's not PTO. Uh, yeah, there's two levers you switch to give power to whichever tool you want to use. So you're going to get your vehicle close to it? Is that what you're telling me? We try to, and then we have to unload it no, to the apartment and carry it. It's a breaking stride and pump and pump that you take. Wherever. We don't have any tools that are connected to the trucks. So oh, well, I... Oh, yeah. sorry. Try to clarify. No, sorry. sorry. I didn't know what you left. So, yeah. so based on what's written here, our two, the tools are still serviceable, but... We get them serviced every year. The, the tools are too old. Uh, to purchase replacement parts. They're, they're getting to that point, like everything else and like portables and the bottles and everything else, it's just they're getting lower on parts and they may not make them. They're, they're coming out with newer stuff every year and the newer stuff isn't compatible with that older stuff. I answer that question. So if, they can't, if, if it's not likely that they can be repaired, which is what is in here, then why would they pass Inspection. I, we haven't had them inspected this sense. year yet. So okay. We usually do that late summer, early fall. Okay. <coughs> but both sets currently are working. Sorry. Uh, today, yes. <coughs> We do truck checks and we start them up every year and we pull a few And if one happened to stop working, you have a backup for right now. 
I wouldn't trust it, but yes. I mean, it, and it would not cut half as much as what our current set cuts now. It's an old, old set. How long is the delivery on something like this? I could have it tomorrow. Oh, okay, so it's not yeah, something It's sitting in the shop at Wyndham, uh, mm. Winthrop right now. If I oh, said okay. ship it, it ship it. And that's all battery operated. Mm -hmm. And it comes with charges and batteries, which we would install in the the apparatus that we would carry the tool on. So there's always charged batteries ready to go. If you, you talked about going to other towns, the mutual aid thing. What other towns have jobs? <coughs> Poland, Paris. Norway. Uh, Norway has a combi tool for correct, which is a battery tool. It's, and um, some of those. Oldersfield just got one um, small tool in Harrison. I believe that's a full set of. I mean, everybody should have one. Yeah, something. Yeah. I make a motion that uh, we purchase the two draw, the two jaws, 42, lot 115. And I will say, I have applied for grants and stuff, and Firehouse Subs and Grant, and even and I have a couple of times. So it's something we've been trying to get replaced for. So this, this is replacing, this is getting two for the 42 or one? Uh, it's a cutter and a spreader and I believe a ram or... But it's one set. It's yes, one it's set. set. It's set. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Sorry. Okay, yeah. thanks. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? I, I, I probably would wait where you said we could get this in a day. I mean, if we were talking, I was broke tomorrow when we needed to order set and it was going to be two months. I think that would be a little different situation, but where you said it could be here tomorrow. Um, but you're saying you use these about five times a year? Not just specific set, but I mean, we've cut cars probably about five times a year. Between the speedway, we'll get called over there or on the road or mutually. So let me ask this this question. This new this new set will do everything that needs to be done if you had to uh, cut. And I won't be limited on action. carrying a lot of equipment to a scene. I could carry that one tool or both. Somebody could take one and one and walk from here to Pottle Road, the end of Pottle Road, and not be limited to the hose of 50 feet. So if um, you're not going to know until you get on the scene and right. this is, so what is, um, what would be the, um, drawback that you would see if you got there, yours broke on the scene and you had to call in for another town? I would start it's mutual the, aid, but it would be a delay of people of getting there. Being able to get there. And then, or a staff. And getting the person or persons right. out. Okay. Right. My, my thought process is the sooner I can get that one battery tool on the car, the quicker I can get EMS in the car and the quicker the patient can get to the hospital. Okay. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Opposed? 32. Pass. Okay, what was the price of 42,000? $42,115. He likes public safety building phones. Is that, it says PDN. <laughs> well, we share it, uh, complex. Uh, our phone system is original. Um, NT and T, uh, told us a couple years ago to start thinking about upgrading the system because again, like everything else, there's no parts. We currently have one phone that the volume control uh, you can't even go up or down on it, and you can't hear what's so you put on hold and go to another phone. We have one, all the phones blink the squad room, it just blinks. And I called the company, and they can't figure out why. Um, so I don't know what's up with that, but it's just the system. You know, and, and if I may add to that, uh, no, my particular no. phone, too, when I go to answer it, a lot of times the button won't come up, so I have to tap it, and it sticks. 
Um, and I think we've purchased ourselves, I think, two units through eBay yep. because the phones that we had just died. And we was lucky to find something on eBay fair. So these are the original ones that when we built the building. Yeah. The um, outside main door, we have two buttons. You can hit a button to, it's a doorbell, let us know somebody's there. And there's a button that rings to the comm center if you're asking for help. Uh, that button is no longer working. Um, that's part of the phone system. Make a motion and go for the new phone system, 10,200. Second. And I believe that's the same phone system we currently have here at, correct? From yep. yep. And is this from a different people? I mean, they probably were Oh, yeah, it's the, whatever the uh, latest grade is. It's the same system we have yeah. up here. Is that NT and T also? Mm -hmm. No, it's Cove Central. Cove Central, yeah, it's a uh, voice over internet. It is the same company that we have here. Um, if this uh, moves forward, my plan will be to reach out to them to see if maybe there's something we can do as far as connecting, you know, connecting the systems together and that kind of stuff. Adam needed to hit the fire button and just go straight to it. Well, that's, yeah. yeah. Which would be right. very nice. Yeah. That would make sense. So that's my question. Um, the phone systems for all of the other departments. It makes sense to me that they're all tied in together for like a main switchboard. And why wouldn't we have a replacement to do all of them at the same time so that everything is connected and works together and all of the phones are replaced all at the same time and um, not just one department. I think that is a wonderful idea. That is uh, actually something that after seeing this bid come through uh, is something that was thought of. Um, but prior to that, the thought of that hadn't crossed my mind, to be frank. So, but once we started down this thought process path, I think that would make a lot of sense to do that. So that all the calls could come in and they could come into a voice prompt. And if you need to talk to somebody, a non-emergency call of the fire, police, or the transfer station, you could just select whichever, you know. So this system quote here, mm -hmm. Will that, the way this has been bid out, will this allow that to happen if other departments are all added in and connected together? Or is it going to remain separate the way it is? This is crafted as a separate, as its own separate entity. Um, I, the other day, placed a call to the, the contact person, Rita, what, you know, Rita, the salesperson, who asked the question of what you just asked, and that is, can we get them connected together? So I don't have an answer for that time. For me, I, before I think we should approve this, and it's just my opinion, I think we need to have an estimate done for a bid package that will combine all of the departments in the town so that they can all be connected, phones replaced, so everything works together rather than doing a piecemeal and then ending up finding out that the public safety building cannot be incorporated with the rest of the town because I think it would be a waste of money if that can't happen. Well, we send my motion. Makes sense. Second it. But I'd like to see it brought to us the next level if you have an answer. Yeah, if they give us a quote by then, yeah, uh, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, and then uh, lastly is the uh, windows, but like I said, I don't believe that needs any action tonight. That's just, a, it is out to RFP. I'll bring that back to you when I get the RFPs back. Just for, personally, I think, I, I don't, why this wasn't part of our CIP that was put before the, uh, the townspeople at town meeting. Um, and for that matter, I guess, the, the, the phone system, because it has to do with a, town building and I guess my thought that if we're going to re I mean this is only not even half the windows that need to be replaced in that building so I think we ought to get a quote to replace all of them and put it for the towns people next year I, I just don't agree with the band-aid approach that that we do sometimes the amount of heat loss and the inefficiencies of that building I'd like to see them put out as our people the whole building and get that taken care of and let the townspeople decide on that next year in the CIP budget, not in a separate like this. 
Is that something that can still get be done? Going out for uh, the cost to replace all of the windows? I mean, instead of just what's the ones on the front. Yeah, the ones on uh, the front, you said. Yeah, these are on the Yeah, sure. the ones for the front are uh, 12. Um, currently are leaking when there's really heavy rain. We're mopping the floors in his office. Deputy Cordell's office, and they are currently leaking. Must have been mopped and pretty steady lately. I know. It's, it's yeah, but now the well, we're going to get on to how much solar we put down. So, <laughs> how many windows are there total? Total 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And this is to do. Wow. That's just to do the front. Just to do 26. Just right? the 12 on the front side of the yeah. But it would make sense <coughs> to the wall. We yeah. all went in the same time. To get a price. I call. agree with that. And and there are, these are already out for some, so I yeah, guess we're waiting to see what that's going to come out. It would have come down. It would have come And if we get a good bid, we just, just put the boys in the wherever we're doing the rest. Mm -hmm. Do an amendment to get the pricing for the balance. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Four quarters. That is right. Yes, there's a. Um, so should we just going to borrow the part, please? Well, I, mm -hmm. As well. much as I would love <laughs> to spend the money for Apex portables like he's wearing on his hips, I only I can downgrade to a lesser portable. Not saying it's cheaper. I, it is less expensive, but I don't need the, the high tech system that you use at the fire department. And use it for fire police. Um, it's to get rid of outdated portables that they currently have. So if they break it. There is no replacement. Um, and I've got the next level up from Motorola to replace those. Because they don't use them like we do. They need to talk from building end to end. We need to talk miles. I'm, I'm missing that yep. I don't see that. There's Deirdre Wireless. That's my mistake. <laughs> I didn't include it in the summary sheet for the. Uh, right. Nope, that's not your fault, Chief. That's mine. Uh, it's dollars $5,313 Deirdre yes. Wireless for the uh, four. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Five thousand. Yep. I mean, four of them? That, that, that actually completes all my portables in my department, and I shouldn't have to do anything for a few weeks. So this is the four for fifty three fifteen to fire points. And that's radius. Correct for you. Is that Motorola too? Correct. So if those were put into this other bid, would that make any difference? I, I don't know. Are you talking about the ones for the police department purchase? Yes. Um I mean right. This My bids through Derrigo Wireless, and he is a Motorola dealer. Who's yours coming? Same person. Oh. It's a different, it is a different radio, though. No, but oh, it was just right, like, right. you know, if you get more. The, the radios that we're buying are 7 watt. These radios here are 5 watt. And mm -hmm. these radios are more or less used, like, by police from one end of the scene to the other, back and forth. They're not communicating to dispatch right. 8 miles away. But the yeah. point he's trying to get is whether a I was just saying, if they're all coming from the company, if you put it in the same package, you oh, yeah, we, we might be able to do that and get a cheaper rate because that was right there. Oh, right there. Sorry, yes. Is that possible that you could try to do that? Absolutely. Yeah. And bring it back to the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Just let them know what you're thinking of. <laughs> do you want to send that email? Or do you With the fire chief. Yeah. Uh, I think it, you brought this up a few weeks ago. I did get some information from uh, Paris Norway. <coughs> um, it has come back 
that we used to do years ago, it is now decided if you would like to run calls with Paris and Nora, you have to join their department. They'll cover your pay, work as calm, and all that stuff. So they've all chose to apply applications to them. So if you see the fire police going that way, they're not for us. So if they're going to a an call in Paris, Paris they're under Paris 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 employee. Paris. They're going to a yep. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Anything further? No, no question. That one was pretty cut and dry. Okay. By five. There's Mo Beach Road retaining wall discussion. All right, a few meetings ago, the board asked about getting a uh, estimate for having the retaining wall on the Pismo Beach Road repaired or replaced. If the board is familiar, it's uh, made out of old railroad ties from a very long time ago. The, ball's, the, the wall is falling apart and eroding. So reached out to an engineer for an estimate. The estimate came back at $78,000 uh, to replace the wall. That includes everything from the actual wall itself um, to include uh, some surveying and, and engineering that would need to be done. I that seems really expensive, but at the same time, no, I mean, I, I'm not an engineer. So I, I think one of the good first steps might be to uh, have the engineer do an actual, you know, to look at, do a survey and find out exactly where the town's right of way is. Um, I believe that's a rod and a half to two rods wide there that the right of way is, but the road itself is nowhere near that wide. So um, being conscious of the property owner's lawn and so forth. So. Uh, if the board wants to proceed, I, I think the, a good first step would be to have the engineer go ahead and proceed forward with design and survey, and then coming back and seeing where we want to go from there. Makes sense to me. No need to put the wall up on a wrong piece of land. No. We didn't have that with conversations. Yeah. <coughs> I agree. Um, Different engineers. <laughs> a lot more expensive. <laughs> Is this something that? Could go out to bed and it's all done together. Well, that yes, I mean that uh, you could put the whole the whole darn thing out together, meaning including the surveying and all that kind of stuff. Um, yes, I believe it could be. The reason that I mentioned that is that funding for this. I mean, if we did the survey and the engineering, we're going to contract with an engineer to design it, and then he'll put the bid package together for us. You know, put it out with all the specs. So. If we got the survey and engineering done at this time, we could have that ready to put out to bid for the spring. That's what I was thinking. It could be on the town meeting warrant and so forth. Why would traffic control be that much of physical control? So he was making an assumption that it's high traffic. What I explained to him was that if we do this in the fall or the spring, there'll be nowhere near as much traffic down there. There's only like two or three homes down there, I believe. So um, I think there's a definitely we can get a reduction there. So we will make a motion to have have him put this together, find out where the lines are, and and proceed. I mean, proceed with getting us the. Oh, what are you what are you asking, Dan? I was I was asking for him to put it all together, but it sounds like we do the. I voted first. Check the engineer. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just think that we should know where we're putting it. Towards, uh, so I think a quote is asking, do you need a motion for that? I think we should probably have a motion. I mean, my next thought is about the funding even for the engineering and so forth. I think one of um, uh, one of the places I might turn for funding is sure the you know the highway the highway fund. I think I also would look to I, I frankly feel like it's a safety hazard um, with the road being so narrow to get down there. It's difficult for emergency vehicles, especially if they meet somebody. I think it also has an effect um, with just accessibility in general. I mean, we do have uh, some money in that um, reserve account for the, the, you know, accessibility, ADA accessibility funds and so forth. I think that maybe that might be a good place to turn for at least the engineering and so forth of this and survey, and then decide where we want the rest of the funding to come from for the actual construction, so. I would agree with that. Um, I, I did mention that road a couple of years ago when we were looking at uh, speed limit signs for um, Mill Street and Pismo Beach Road. And if I remember correctly, that road is only 16 foot wide. 
having the engineer design and survey it may give us the opportunity to widen that road, um, which would be needed because you can only get a pontoon boat down there. If you have a fire down there, the fire vehicles going down there, they're going to be wall to wall where that uh, wall is now on the Owens property, and which could very well be on the town's right of way, and the cemetery wall. And it continues to fall into the road, which is not a good thing either. So I, w I would agree with that. And then we would know if and how much the road could be widened. Was that a motion, Jim? It was. Second. <laughs> the only thing I get thought about, it just might be a right of way down through there because that was the leech's property and they turned it over to the town. I right. If it's just a right. We don't know. I, I know if that's what I'm saying. Well, what, what kind of right of way they gave. That's why doing, I right. mean, you can look at that deed, but you can also yeah. determine that when the survey's done too. So when this was a when it was transferred ownership, Pismo Beach Road didn't exist, or was it just an access? Just an access down to Pismo Beach. Oh, okay. There's no vault. There wasn't any vault here yeah. at that time. Just the beach. Yeah. Motion in the second of that one. Long, long, longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the argument was about the little shack there. And well, the, the reason for the shock was because the deed states no permanent structures. I get that, but I mean, we, we had the shed for the ball field. But that was, no ball field. oh, but that wasn't, that was in current years. I mean, the ball field was there right. uh, when we put the snack shack up. But years ago when the Legion uh, donated that to the town, mm -hmm. yeah. Just the beach. Um, that was really long before my time too of yeah. being involved with this. Yeah, I think it was back in the '60s when that was donated to the town. I because the, the, the legion didn't want to be responsible for the, the liability of what state. Right. Um, so we can research that too. I think that was. You have a copy of the deed here, right. but I also have a copy at home. So I think if you. We checked on that. We, we had were, to do that a while back. The fire was yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Fire. But I think that that was donated to the town in the 60s. What about the uh, dump road? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it, the trees keep getting hit. Smith Road. The thorn in Smith, yeah. yeah. Thorn in there. I mean, it's a 75 foot right away according to the deed I read. On the Smith Road? Yeah. Maybe the town crew can just go in there and cut those branches back. The branches is tree. All right. All so we had a motion and a second on the Pismo. Yeah. Um, any other discussion on that? All well, those in favor? Mm -hmm. so we're good to go. I'm sorry. That was yep. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Department head report. I figured where we heard from both these department heads significant tonight, we'd be all set. Well, I just want to add uh, thank you for allowing the weekend help, additional help, twice now. While the first rescue was out, the fire crew took a second rescue and handled two more medical calls, so we didn't have to turf that revenue to somebody else. I'll keep you guys up to date on that. Chief? Well, we're planning for you know the 250 right now. That's coming sooner than we think. Uh, working on some fair stuff right now. Going to get that done. It looks like, from what I've heard from the racetrack, the 603 diesel for the end of September is probably going to happen. Um, that was in limbo for a little while, but it's looking like that's going to go forward. So, planning for those major events and getting ready. When is the 250? Uh, the last weekend of August, I think it's August 25th, okay. 6th and 7th, I believe, off the top of my head. I have it on my count, my other calendar to give you a call about <laughs> at some point. Yes, yes, definitely. Yep. Still on track for you pick up? Uh, yes, very good news about the pickup. I got a call from Leo Chicoin from Cork. Uh, Ford has issued the town of Oxford a VIN number now for that Ford pickup. And hopefully we'll take delivery by the end of September, fingers crossed. So I'm using 
working on that final RFP now to, for all the equipment. And I, my plan is to have that out tomorrow. So that is moving ahead. And other than that, I'll tell you that we're almost we're almost to three thousand complaints right now for the year. So manager's report. All right. Uh, first item, just uh, one more time, a public reminder: the transfer station hours are going to be changing starting July thirty first, Monday and Tuesday, seven a.m. to four p.m. Wednesday and th Thursday closed. Friday and Saturday, seven to four. Sunday, eight to noon. So I just wanted to just give that one more shout out to the public forum. And then uh, the, seventh, the next uh, town manager item is uh, just a few quick things. I wanted to give an update, uh, lots 11 and 12 from the Park Road Business Park, the closing happened for those uh, just last week on Friday. So that's exciting. And then um, I've been asked about the Pismo Beach attendance specifically. Um, we have had an ad out for Pismo Beach attendance and have not had any any viable interest in those positions. So um, in an effort to try and keep things cleaned up, those that are working as summer rec counselors have been trying to you know, do some cleanup down at the beach and, and you know, for us and so forth. But just so the board's aware, we have had that advertised. Um, another thing that we, well, I'll skip that part, the Whittemore Road and Number 6 Road, those two, as Lois already mentioned, uh, they're going to put the surface coats on. It sounds like that's already, well, some of it was done today. Um, that should be done by the end of the week. They will be coming back to do the shoulders uh, shortly, but they will on Monday be coming back to do the shim and overlay on Pottle Road here. I gave them permission to park their equipment in the end of the parking lot here, just because it seemed to make sense. Are we putting another lane in the pit? On the road? Yeah, so the highway department was able to try and ensure that up themselves, so to make a turning lane. I thought that made good sense. Yeah, so, no, I yeah. yeah, so no, they're doing good work over there. So. Um, the last thing for town manager comments was uh, we talked uh, just a minute ago about the capital uh, capital plans and so forth. I put together kind of a, a loose schedule here. I'd like to uh, start doing uh, some of the selectmen have shown interest in doing walkthroughs of the departments. And my thought was if we were to do a walkthrough with board members that had the time and interest to do it, and then afterwards at that same selectmen's meeting, maybe we would sit down. The department had the board and the manager and discuss uh, further development of the 10-year capital plans for that specific department. Um, I'm thinking if we do this all the way through into January, as you can see, I put dates and times on here, we would um, have that information be, would be solidified for the next budget cycle. Does the board uh, like that approach or? Have a good one. All right, times and stuff. All right. So. My only thought is, is I'll make sure that, uh, you know, everything's just posted according to that. And then the selectmen's meeting, like for instance, with the, the, the rec, or, rec or police and fire, we might be longer than the full hour. So I just know that the meeting would start here at the conclusion of the walkthrough kind of a thing. So I think that would work fine. But if that works for everybody, I'll make sure that we uh, post it that way. So thank you. Question. Yes. Going back to Pismo Beach and beach tendons, yep. specifically the goose poop on the beach, something more than what's being done needs to be done. I understand if you can't find uh, someone to fill the positions for the beach attendants, but what's, work, what's being done right now uh, with the cleanup being done by the counselors is not enough and it's not working. I have had too many complaints of, uh, fam from families and people who go down to the beach and um, there's just too much goose poop down there that is not being tended to. That needs, Lois can speak to this, that goose, the goose droppings is actually what I call it, uh, needs to be tended to every morning before people get on that beach. Um, that's always been the number one problem there. So if beach attendants can't be found, then, and it's not just the first thing in the morning, because if geese get on there during the day, it still needs to be cleaned up. So we need to have someone who will go there every day 
Shoot and, the wheels. And if that would be a great idea. <laughs> Most of it's on my boat. I'll probably not do that. Yes, I know. They seem to like the They like the boat, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that has to be uh, cleaned every day before the kids and the families get there. Um, the, the complaints I have had are not very nice complaints and that they won't go to Pismo anymore because of the fact that they feel it is not a good place to go because of that. So I think we need to maybe figure out some way to find someone that's going to take care of that every single day. And that's on week, that's seven days a week. How many geese are there now? Oh, there, it does, I couldn't tell you that, but there's a lot. Oh, yeah. I think we should take them out. I mean, <laughs> and you can't do anything there to protect the species. Oh, no. Huh? Oh, no. Well, on that note, I have had the right to reach out to Warden Service. Well, talk about only one town that I read recently was able to do something, but um, we can't just sit back and not do anything. That beach needs to be cleaned every day. And that's not just Monday through Friday, that's seven days a week. Okay. I'll, I'll see what, I'll see what okay. we can do. I don't have an answer for you how to do it, but... Um, you can't relocate well, I, I don't you know you yeah. I suppose the they used to put out things to try to deter them. And they had silhouettes there for a while. I uh, thought they were for a short period of time. They, they got I, stolen, I didn't know. they? I, yeah, I stolen or broken? I think you're broke. Yeah. I mean, do you really, do you really think that those silhouettes were helpful? No. Long term, I think they got used to it. Yes, exactly. That's why I said short term it worked. I, yeah. My memory, but after they got used to them, it was nothing. We used to put them on the cone fields. So they come in late. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. I guess the only uh, other thing I'd add to that is maybe next year we advertise a little bit earlier in May. See if we can get. Yes. Actually, you're right on that because the beach attendants should be hired and ready to start as soon as school's out, and maybe even sooner. Yeah. I have any idea when they're going to be up in East Arsene to fix the roads? The sides of the roads are all washed out. Well, I know that I gave the last at the last meeting. We had a pretty good list. I forwarded to that to Jim. He's been working on that. I don't have a specific work order on when he's going to be up there, but I've given him all of those lists. Um, you know, we just did the culvert on the Payne Road, and he's been chipping away. You know, I can get you a specific time if you. No, no, I'm just curious because I knew I had a culvert put in that's all washed out, and then all the way up and down the Hubert Road, it's washed out alongside, and it's just the road is caving in. It's too bad to watch it fall. Fall into the not the ditch, the snowbank ditch, or the sandbank ditch. Why the ditches are fine on the other side. It's just where the sandbank was. Why don't I invite Mr. Bennett to the next meeting to do his department and report? Well, I have to stop on the scene. You know, people riding around the neighborhood. <laughs> That's two. On Rabbit Valley, not too far after you get onto Rabbit Valley from King Street. With this last round of rain on the right hand side going down, there's quite a deep washout there. I mean, it's right there at the edge of the road. On the King Street end? On the King Street end. I don't know if Jim has seen that or not, but um, it, it's washed out pretty good. My concern would be that the edge of that road is compromised. Question: Did FEMA? Did you get in touch with FEMA to see if we get any funds? 
Do you want to speak to that? Yes. I've done a lot of work with um, FEMA recently with um, the winter storm in the last, uh, not this current last rainstorm, the one before, and I've done all the paperwork. We're just waiting to get the next step's going to be. Has Jim submitted the damage from the roads? Has he done a report? Yes, so that I you have. all combined? Yeah. Jim's, Jim's given me all the information oh, okay. and I submitted to FEMA. Okay, and yeah. you haven't heard yet. Okay. How long has it been? Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we had a, a the collective meeting. meeting. The last Friday's meeting, and usually we meet every Friday, too. Okay. And, and she kind of uh, alluded to the fact there's a waiting game right now. Yeah, there was a yeah. yeah. report to do, so they're waiting on their end. Yeah. Okay. And did, did you happen to get an answer to the reason why they bring the buried up the grade one path road and not the other? Well, beyond just they thought I mean, they thought they were doing it right, so I mean they hadn't thought to do with the other approach. So, well, it makes sense to, to do. Well, if you come with Walter, you need him. <laughs> yeah, they took care of Walter's. So it. you're only moving the equipment once, once. right? And then, but they forgot about the road going up to my uh, uh -huh. watts. Right. That road, they just go right off. I don't think it was something that was done. Oh, I understand. It was just when you go up there, every time before they used to go, they graded both roads. Now, two times now, they come up and grade Wallace Road. Then the last time they came back and graded the other road. It just doesn't make sense to bring that graded back and forth. What the first, uh, that's yeah, first. Yeah. I think one of the issues that Highway has is that they're going in about 18 different directions every mm -hmm. day. And I really think that come budget season, um, with the amount of work that they they have to do, a lot of look at at least one person or something because <laughs> I, yep. every time every time we have this meeting is like, well, can we get Jim to do this? And no, 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 no. But my point is, they're already there. But no, no, no. And I and I agree with that. But I'm just saying that I, I know Jim has been the one upgrading the roads because everybody else has been busy and you know and he has stuff he has to do. So I, I just see us constantly just falling behind. We haven't even fixed where the wing, I mean, East Oxford or all the way to Paris, there's like three ditches there, because, really? <laughs> so, I mean, it, I mean, if you put somebody in that grader, you, I mean, I'm pretty sure they'd be busy through to the fall to get their shoulders back and stuff, but I just don't, I don't see that as a... But I think somebody should teach somebody how to cross them too. First opinion. Any other selectmen items? Number nine, executive session. 9.1 to enter executive session to discuss personnel matter pursuant to MRSA Title One, Chapter 13, Section 4056A. Can we sign the warrants before we go into executive session? No. I've got them yeah, listed next year. Can I have a motion? Very good. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Nope, no, that was me. Do you mind getting the lock on the front? Because then I can just get the lock on the front. I'm hiring somebody. Yeah, when they're done, I'll take care of them. I'll take the minutes on there. And in the summer, that's when they take it. So 